All right, welcome to section 1.4, the matrix equation. Uh, here's where we get uh, some new notation and we get some new concepts and not really anything new by way of computation. I have to tell you guys, I just made three videos for this section and posted them all and discovered that the mic wasn't on for any of them. So this is take two. So, all right, so suppose we have a system of equations, uh, this two by three system, two uh, equations with three unknowns, and we're gonna try to solve this thing. So, so far we have three or two different ways to notate this aside from the original. So I guess the original is one way and then we have two more ways to notate this. Uh, so we have, uh, by way of notation, uh, one of the ways that we have is the augmented matrix. Uh, that's what we met pretty much on the first day of class. Where we would just take the X's and equal signs off and we would have 2, 5, 1, 3, 1, 3, 6, two and then to solve that of course we would do the reduced row echelon form which I won't do right now um, and sometimes for the augmented matrix just to indicate that that it is augmented uh, you put this little dotted line in there where the equal signs would go and sometimes you don't sometimes it's clear from context that you have an augmented matrix okay um, so that was one notation uh, the second notation that we have um, is the vector equation form and that's where we look at the coefficients of x1 as being a vector so we say x1 is multiplied by 2 and by 1, and you say x1 is multiplied by that, uh, order is, uh, doesn't matter here, multiplication is commutative, so you could put the x1 after or before, but it's traditional to put it before. Um, and then we'd say um, x2 is multiplied by 5, 3, and x3 is multiplied by 1, 6. Um, and that equals yet another vector, uh, which is 3, 2. Uh, as far as solving this, the only technique we have for solving this is to recognize that all three of these notations are the same and to use our one and only solving technique, which is to put it into an augmented matrix and then row reduce. Okay, so now let me introduce to you a third form. Let's see, let's get a third color going here. How about this lovely shade of green? And we'll get the matrix equation form. Uh, and this form is just a slightly more compact way of writing the other three, I guess. And it recognizes, or you start by making a matrix, and you make this matrix out of the vectors from the previous form. So you'd say 2, 1, 5, 3, 1, 6. And then you actually write that matrix as being multiplied. And we haven't yet done any operations on matrices, like adding them or multiplying them or anything. So this is our first time. And we're going to say it's multiplied by the individual multipliers, by x1, x2, and x3. And we'd still say that result comes out 3, 2. Um, so there's a third form. This means exactly the same thing that the others mean. Uh, matter of fact, you should be able to translate between all three, all four of these forms here. 
Um, and I just wanted to point out in general that anytime we have a matrix times a vector like this, uh, it means that same thing. So just as another example, uh, if you had something like one, two, three, four, five, six times, I will need three here, times one, negative four, two. Uh, that still means you will do one times the first vector, which is one, two, uh, and plus, or actually, I guess I should say minus four times the second vector, three, four, and plus two times the third vector, five, six. Uh, so this form where you've got a matrix and it's traditional to call the matrix A and uh, the vector often gets called X. Um, and then you can just crunch that out and see what you actually get from this one. Let's see if I can do all this in my head. Let's see, that'll be one minus 12 is negative 11 plus 10 is negative one on top. And on the bottom will be two minus 12 is negative 10 plus 12. Okay, so hopefully I didn't make an arithmetic mistake there, but uh, that should crunch down all the way to that. Okay, um, so your book formalizes this. Uh, this is the definition from the book. And let's make sure that we just understand what they're talking about here. Uh, I think the example should make this pretty straightforward, but uh, let's be clear that if A is an M by N matrix, so in all these examples so far, A has been a two by three matrix. Keep in mind it's rows by columns, so two by three. Uh, with columns A1 through AN, and that's the same N, by the way, this N right here, that N right there. So if you've got a two by three, then obviously you'll have three columns, right? One, two, three columns. And X is a vector that should also have three entries, right? R3, because it's going to tell you how to combine the three columns. Uh, then the product of A and X, denoted by AX, that's how you write the product, is a linear combination of the columns using the corresponding entries in X as the weights, which basically is just their way of saying, hey, you're going to combine these columns. So there's the first column, one, two, three, four, five, six, the three columns, and we're combining them with these weights. We're doing one of the first column. We're doing negative four of the second column. We're doing two of the third column. Um, yeah, so that's, I guess, our new notation. And in the next video, we'll do a little bit more with the new concept.